basically or a waste disposal process and plant or something. So there, there's things like that. You might say, well, what's good, what's bad about it? And there may be things, it's not a requirement in this, but it's just to try and get your thought processes ticking over, okay? Now this stuff's not really cutting them up very well, so I don't know if I can dim this down a bit. It's going to be very dark, I suppose, but let's see. Does that make any difference? Not really. Oh, well. Um, look, it's just a rough sketch. Uh, I think I've got some, well, these things have to be light. But one of the things that people missed out at the very end, I mean, this was probably a bit too neat in some ways, but we had some proposals, and people actually just stuck a square or a shape on a site and they actually didn't really do a proper site plan. So one of the first things you should do is describe in your head, mark it down, chisel it in there, that I must do a decent site plan. Because it is all about site opportunities and constraints. So you may show things like spring planting of trees uh, to try and overcome things like maybe noise from a source that you've identified. But just having the building here without any kind of landscaping or maybe showing the kind of surfaces uh, wouldn't be very good and you wouldn't get good marks because this whole thing is really about how the building responds to the site and how you're going to treat it. So if you don't have a landscape site plan, you're going to restrict your ability to gather the marks that you'll need, okay? Okay, I mean these are ones that were done by previous students. Again, look, we don't mind if they're rough sketches. I like this kind of stuff. There's a bit of energy about it. Um, you can see it's the right hemisphere this time. Uh, this was done a couple of years ago, and it's just showing how he kind of uh, analysed the site, and that was part of his final submission. Uh, you can see he's picking up things, he's putting things about the slope, he's mentioning the orientation, he's got the all important north point, and uh, you know, he's just making notes about factors and uh, you know, <coughs> objects or features of the site that may influence uh, or constrain what he's able to put on it, okay? So those kind of sketches, I think, like it. I mean, last year we had people doing CAD on this. We're not really interested in CAD, guys. It's a hand drawn exercise because people last year were getting totally the wrong idea. The CAD is what we'll be doing starting next Wednesday and we finish it off in the next four weeks to go. That's the major house project. This one is all about you thinking about your site, identifying factors, analyzing them, finding information, and then responding to them. We're not looking for three days and showing that you're Archicad Ninja in this assignment. So there's another thing you should mark on your head that we're not looking for. So don't be a politician. Don't give us a really good answer to a question you weren't asked. Because this is something students do a lot. In fact, I've marked a couple of assignments in R2 already, and I can see where some people have left out things they were asked to do, despite one of the tutors sitting up here and through the criteria very, very slowly, meticulously, other people they still haven't decided to listen to it, and they've not get the marks. So please look at the assignment, ask questions, and make sure you're clear about what we're looking for. And here's another very simple diagram, uh, which came, I think I've seen this in my book somewhere. I'm trying to do one myself, but it was just a little sketch. Uh, I think this is a very old one, but again, just picking up things like the orientation, winds, back in the days for CAD, where we actually had to write. CAD back in those days meant can't actually draw, so we had to draw with our hands. You guys are going to go back in time for a little while. But you get the idea that the diagrams don't have to be surgical or clinical. They can have a little bit of character. You can they might show your own typeface, your own font. And uh, these things, we love to see them. Okay? So that kind of diagram, it's up to you how you present it. We don't want to be too prescriptive, so we're trying to balance between making sure you know what's necessary and then not uh, telling you exactly what we want. So these are kind of diagrams you can think about. There's other ones as well. And how you want to present it then is your call. So you don't have to copy or do exactly these ones. Take some ideas from it, you can develop it. So let's go on to appraise the number one. I mean, <coughs> this is a, from a building design magazine. And it really is just showing you how the designers have done a really rough sketch here. And they've got the sun, and they've got some notes, they've got parking, they've got this great theater. And yet the building ended up really, here's the two kind of wings. And you can see that this kind of follows the rough sketch. So what happens from the sketches, architects doing the back of envelopes or um, beer puddles, and I'm not recommend you do that by the way, or allegedly it has happened. 
uh, we don't know when you're going to get your good ideas. So that's why architects tend to carry sketch pads around a lot. People like Norman Foster also they sketch these ideas come under their heads. But rough sketches become neat drawings, which become buildings. So that's where the appraisal is such an important part of the process. Um, we'll look at the first criteria: general description of the site. In the past, people just have gone DP number, CT address, but we're not really looking for that so much. We, yeah, it's useful to have, it's good. But I think you should think about it in terms of gra both graphical and how you describe it in words. And we're not looking for big essays here. I mean, my analogy for this would be if you hear the news, news talk or whatever, when you actually look at the TV and you say something happened in the world, they normally give you a map of the region and then they zoom in around the little part of it and blow that up. And then they zoom in and you get to the site eventually. So to me, that's a good graphical way of telling who's looking at the assignment. Yeah, this is where the site's located. This is the area, the region, and this is the kind of actual boundaries of it. Because you could be doing something for a big company and the headquarters could be in Europe, America, and they won't know as much about Auckland or whatever country it's in, Fiji, Vanuatu, and you might have to give them good background information because you're the subject matter expert. You're the one who's done the research. So think of it in terms of trying to get some screenshots. Could be thumbnails. You know, we're not actually print this out. It's on digital paper, so it's not like A3, A4. You can use whatever software you want to actually produce the two panels. But we're just looking for two uh, collage pages which show graphics and text. And this is a suggestion of how people have kind of done things like this before. And this guy has done a kind of an Auckland one. This is a PDF which will be on Moodle as well. You may get satellite images, you may get a combination of them. He's used a little table. And uh, you know, you might just have a <coughs> description to say, the site's located, blah, blah, blah. It's gently sloping, it's steeply sloping, it's flat, it's surrounded by roads. You know, we'll, we'll get to the access later, but we're just looking for a little combination, as I say, of graphics and text, and a couple of lines, and then you'll have Pick that particular box. Do you get the idea? Is there any <coughs> questions? No? So we can move on to that one. Okay, so that's a general description of the site. The second one, I think we've talked about a lot, and uh, Ian mentioned it on Monday, and I think he saw the one from the, the architect show I showed last week. <coughs> Basically, you know, you're looking at sun paths. I mean, this one is from a student years ago. He uh, used funny graphics. This looks like somebody's been planting bombs around this site, you know, but. I, ironically enough, being from Northern Ireland, that's exactly what used to happen, but um, yeah. So this one made me laugh when I saw it, you know, I thought, so maybe de don't defuse the bombs, just put a nice kind of sun graphic or something. Um, you know, you can actually do, like you mentioned about azimuth the other day, sometimes it's uh, longer, well it is longer in the summer, shorter in the winter, we're not asking you to get the exact data, you're just trying to give some graphical indication that the days are longer in the summer and you get, you'll get the right hemisphere. This is obviously the northern hemisphere. But he has been at prevailing winds, you know, his line weights are a bit heavy here. I think you can just about see a uh, shorter winter one there. But this is an attempt at showing the orientation on that uh, site. Here's somebody else has done some, and they've actually gone a bit further, and they've added things like the views in as well. And you may use a different map for every single criteria, but you could find space getting a bit tight in which case you may decide, I'm going to combine them, and that can work really well. And, and this assignment you know, picks up on skills you learnt in 4043, and I think the majority of you have studied that, where you actually study page layouts, composition, okay, and white spaces on the page and stuff, so it is possible, and I think in this one, you might not have much white space. But if I was you, you know, you might just pen out a few things about the criteria and say to your tutor, oh look, Think, is this kind of what we're talking about here? Yeah, you're on the right track. No, you're not. <coughs> Come at it from another direction. So the more you kind of produce uh, initially and get some comment and feedback on it, because this one, this is not the end of the week. I think this is two weeks. The, the um, assignment brief gives you the date. I think it's the 22nd of August. And it's also on your Moodle calendar. But uh, that needs clarified, let us know. But basically, you're going to find information first. So it's going to be things like prevailing winds, it's going to be orientation. You can find that in your MET service, your AccuWeather, 
uh, it's kind of betting you're a surfer, dude. So I'm sure you've got all this. Uh, this I know there's websites that give the kind of a, the swells and all this kind of stuff. There's loads of uh, you know weather data out there. So in a way, you're going to be unlike that. You're going to be fighting the weather waffle. Okay, so don't be stopping the weather waffle for at least a week or two. You're going to have to find out about it. And once you get it, the important thing is what do you do with it? How may it affect your design? How may it affect where you put the building on the site? And I, look, if you put it in a place that me or Ian or Ute don't agree with, that doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means you want to hear your reasoning behind that. And we can be wrong. And uh, we're not going to knock you, you know, just fail you completely for that anyway. So we're not into that kind of thing. We want to see the effort, we want to see the reasoning. And if you've got reasons behind it, that's what we are happy to look at. So orientation, does anyone have any ideas how it might affect your designs? Any thoughts about how that might come about? What do you reckon? Because you only have two weeks to be told about it, so somebody in this room must have an idea, apart from Ian and Ruthie. Yeah, Sam, you're getting worried, I'm gonna ask you, Arky. So maybe I will since you're on the computer. So Keep you on tender hooks here. So Sam's sweating here now, as are the other people who I know the names. Or am I just picking somebody? So somebody in here must know. Otherwise, you're going to find this orientation stuff and you don't get the marks because you don't know how to describe it or what you're going to do with it. Is that the case? So despite what Ian said last week and what I said last week, you still don't know about orientation. Skylar, I remember you said, see, sorry about that. What do you reckon? Have a go. You won't have a go. You have to have a go because you're doing an assignment. Unless you're going to, you're going to withdraw off the course, are you? Because otherwise you'll fail. So even if it's wrong, it'd be better than nothing. So what? Are you, what's our orientation? How are you going to use it? I can't hear you. Which group are you? Who's, who's stream are you? You say? Did she talk to you? Yeah. Okay. Well, do you want to just imagine you're talking to you say So. We here, you've been attending reasonably well, so you were here last week, weren't you? So why don't you close your eyes and just say something that everybody can hear? What's, what's the sun going, how's it going to affect your, your building? <coughs> or the wind? Yeah? Please say something, would you? Okay, I'll, yeah, I'll come right up because I can't hear it. I think you're saying. So she's not going to say it to everybody, guys. So, right, please say something. What is it? Okay. Sun exposure. Okay, there's an answer. So, what sun exposure means to that? What do you think she means by that? Sun exposure is different for buildings than people, isn't it? So, the buildings get sunburned. Do they? Does the sun actually affect the leaks? Yeah. yeah, it does. And that, uh, bring it on, we've got color state, all that stuff. But, you know, materials do get affected by it. So there's one, which is kind of weird one. I didn't think of that, but Skyler thought of it eventually. But, you know, it's common sense. But how else, could anyone else think of how else you may use the sun? Well, think about, two. what's that? Warmth. Warmth? Is that you said that? Yeah. Okay, so what do you mean? So he's on about <coughs> passive solar gain. He's on about maybe putting bigger windows a certain place. <coughs> maybe put a concrete slab on or something to try and heat that up and let it slowly cool down. Okay, so these are types, of, there's about two or three other things you could think of. So try and get out of your heads and let us see what you're doing. Otherwise, you're gonna to struggle to pass this assignment. And maybe hopefully you're less shy writing things down than you are talking about them. But if you don't know it, I mean, there's 50 people in here. Nobody wants to engage, it's really weird. So, uh, if assignments are no good, well, I don't know what else we can do about it. You won't ask questions. So, has anyone got any more questions about orientation? Anyone, any other thoughts about how you can use it? <coughs> Is there any other one? I mean, yeah, who's this up here, Vishnu, yeah? Um, when the sun comes up, the kitchen. Yeah, you might decide to put certain rooms, get in the light at certain times of the day. So, okay, I think that's enough help. All right, and look, by the way, this is not new. 
people have been doing it for thousands of years. Well, this one I think is only a thousand years old. This is in uh, Colorado. 